nearly two weeks ago probably 10 days ago when me and Sarah were previewing and as we were previewing games were getting struck off the list and we were still thinking god Mark and David are going to have a lot of games to talk about <laughs> um, we've got less than a normal round to talk about well we've got two rounds to yeah. talk about so we're going to start with we're going to do them in order and we're going to start in round 12 uh, and we're going to start with a game that was eight days ago now so I can't remember much of it but it was Wigan versus Warrington it was 18-6 to the wire at half time uh, it finished 40 points to 14 um, to Warrington by the end of the match Robert Hicks was the match referee unfortunately um, the Super League opt to stats people took the night off so we don't have we didn't get any stats through the Super League website so we, we can't talk to you about the 400 metres that Jake Mamo probably run or or, or anything like yeah. that um, yeah, we, did. we can tell you that Ethan Havard of Wigan got a grade A dangerous contact charge out of this game from the disciplinary which obviously grade A first offence no match penalty notice so fair enough and we did get loads of fan views so they might jog our memories a little bit so do you want to start with EFC I will uh, this game was some battle but there was only one winner which was the mighty wire of Warrington against an off form Wigan Warriors on their home turf Jake Mamo is defo my man of the match since he got his first hat trick uh, that is some day that the away supporters enjoy compared with the last uh, to last with a 16-10 defeat on the opening day in this fixture. But this time we'll take the win, even when it's 14-44 away from home. Matt Speakman said, disappointed in the 500 or so Wigan fans who gave up their tickets for Super League's classiest fan base to <laughs> cheer head knocks and start trouble. Uh, game went pretty much the way I expected. Yeah, we have plenty of injuries, but the 13 on the park should be doing much better than this. Painful to watch as they made it look easy to score, and we made it look very hard. Long few months ahead for Wigan fans. Alayla Drax? Question mark. <laughs> Goodness uh, gracious, Matt. <laughs> dear uh, me. Uh, Barney at Battenhall Blue uh, says, not sure Warrington really needed the tries Wigan gifted. <laughs> them to win that would uh, like to say that it was great to be back at the rugby but that was hard watch at times too small and inexperienced Wigan tried their best but there was only ever going to be one winner it could actually be Warrington's year uh, uh, this was before the Leeds game I think there is uh, a making of a team in that Wigan squad but top four will be an achievement based on that showing Neil Ormston said, Real shame we were off in parts tonight as Wigan were right for having 60 put on them there. Lambs deluded. Three tries against the run of play and a six again call with 20 to go cost them? Question mark. Why are dominant and even when it got back to eight point gap we didn't look under stress? Obvious highlight. Poach Mamo again. Shame we're losing him. If you don't name this cast positive reinforcement crew in his honour I'll be disappointed. Well... Do you know what the issue there is, Neil? As I didn't watch his post-match interview because I was at the game and then I wasn't fucking watching it back, mate. As much as, uh, uh, but this, this, <laughs> as, this much as I'm committed is... to the show, I'm not that committed. Yeah, but this PRC thing is the reference from earlier, I think, Mark. Positive reinforcement crew. Ah, but... there you uh-huh. go. So we totally missed go. it, but um, we, yeah. We did, both of us. Both of us. Uh, at Mike Dodd 22 said a comprehensive victory for the wire on my first away day since a cold trip to Wakey in February 2020. Wigan were poor in the first half and wire could and probably should have scored 30 plus. Wigan were much better in the second half, but wire had enough points on the board to keep them at arm's length. Hill and Lyndon made big meters again. Mamo and Wrench excellent at both ends of the field. I thought we played Lee last week. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mike, because someone in the crowd had to. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure Mike wasn't one of the people who reportedly snuck in beer and threw the bottles around and, and that yeah. sort of stuff either. So uh, stay classy, Warrington fans, but you know, not aimed at Mike or Neil or any of our friends because they're not so bad no indeed white pie said spineless and pathetic from wigan don't miss you don't mince your words lee <laughs> the players should be embarrassed and it's largely the senior players letting the side down that's the only bright spots were the younger guys kpp and joe shorrocks were the best of the bunch and hastings tried to generate something but no one else was up to it liam farrell scored oh no he scored in the game against you didn't he Not yeah he did uh, um Warrington did nothing spectacular but made easy metres with every carry and were, and were clearly the better side. 
Hob the Viking says, Warrington just too good for Wigan tonight. Wigan lacking confidence and motivation. What is Mamo on? Looked like he was off his head. Def- <laughs> Def- uh, you define you had a look of Jim Curry during that. In oh, definitely had the look of Jim Curry during that interview. <laughs> Uh, Lee Whitnell said, Wigan players were able to boost their assist tra- stats in this one, helping Mamo <laughs> to a cheeky hat-trick. Wrench's try was my favourite of the night, though. Great to see another academy product on the score sheet. I can only assume that either Sean Wayne or NRL club recruiters have asked to see a kicking game from Daz Clark, but happy to reap the benefits whilst we've got him. Wigan fans seem to enjoy their evening. Mm, Tom Andrews says, Pretty dull game. <laughs> As where kids beat Wigan kids. Highlight was definitely the post-match interview. I can only dream of having that much energy after 80 minutes exercise. Don't worry, Mark, not long till that league game now. <laughs> and David Hunter said, I thought Wigan were good early, but Warrington just better. The intercepts from Mama were so good, and I want to join his group. I love the post-match interviews. We really missed something with these post-match interviews, didn't we, Mark? I think we might have gone go and dig this one out. Uh, and normally I would actually, but no, been, my, my life has been elsewhere in the last in the last week. Yeah. I think. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah uh, Connor Connor Wrench was mentioned a few times there. He he was really impressive. You know, he he took his try well. Um, he set up a try for Curry, didn't he? Later on in the game, with really neat stuff. He he, he was impressive and. You know he's he's being drip fed in when there's opportunities for him and he's performing well and and KPP was mentioned he was Wigan's brightest as well he set up the Sam Powell try didn't he and, and looked a threat uh, at other occasions in the game as well so so that's positive um, from a Wigan perspective Harry Smith won't have enjoyed the video review session from from this game I think he has to chalk the whole thing up to a learning experience for the kid in in this game you know he. Um, he kicked one out on the full. He missed a perfect opportunity to set up a try for Wigan by setting up a try for Warrington. And he got his hips all wrong and his defensive position all wrong as well for the Jack Hughes try, didn't he? So um, there was a few bits and pieces there for, for 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 young Harry to work on, but I'm sure he'll he'll fix it up. Um, but I, I'm going to say this, in, and people might jump on me for this, but yes, Wigan were poor, and yes, Warrington were brilliant. I think the scoreline flattered Warrington a little bit, though. Uh, certainly that second half scoreline. Wigan were, for for large parts of that second half, I think Wigan were as good as we've been since the start of our five-game lo- losing run. Um, you know, we had some good moments in that second half, and some things started to look more right than 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 they were, than they have been. Um, but because we were so far behind. There was chances that were taken that just helped. It, go, it goes like that, doesn't yeah. it, Mark? It goes like that when, when you know, scores can just blow out a little bit when you're pushing the edge of of risk in order to try and get yourself back into a game. Um, and you're right. So, I mean, Smith didn't have or had a game that he would want to forget. Um, but you know that. That's rugby league for you. It can just go that way. Uh, I thought it was more competitive. This is a game I did watch. This, you know, I thought it was more competitive than the scoreline showed at the end. And in fact, I think one of the one of the commentary one of the commentaries said that actually Wigan played better in the second half, uh, but the score got away from them. Um, they, they played better in the second half than the first. And the eighteen points that were gifted. It's part of that scoreline, maybe not quite yeah. reflecting everything we saw in the game, but it did reflect yeah. the fact that Warrington were loads better. First off, Warrington probably should have been more ahead. They, they yeah. were. Wigan did turn up with an intensity in this game that was better than what we'd seen, but the goal line defence for Wigan isn't where it has been in the past and isn't. And then this game, it was it was pretty weak. Warrington took full advantage. I mean, Wigan had through good intensity at the start of the game, a bit of field position, but then they gave away a penalty and Warrington had their first attack and scored. So, you know, a bit of, yeah. a bit better intensity from Wigan, but totally better clinical application from Warrington, even missing Widdop, which I thought might help us out. Um, you know, it turned out that they needed a game together, Austin and Ratchford, to not to work out how to not play together. And um, yeah. 
and so this game was was the set the, set the, the platform for them to be useless against <laughs> against Leeds. But um, no, I think there is a chance. I know the the Leeds game we'll talk about, but I think there is a chance that it's Warrington's year with with some of the things I saw. Um, you know, from them recently this season and and in this game, they they turned up. They looked more intense in the warm up than Wigan did. I felt. Uh, my my uncle Liam didn't necessarily agree with me on that, but that's from what my perspective. They look more ready for the game and they perform like they were more ready for the game. Wigan's confidence is low. Warrington's was it's not. Hot. Yeah. And and I think they've got a nice balance between the pack and the backs. Yeah. The, the, the pack gives them enough punch for them to be effective with their half backs and their outside backs. Um, and there isn't, they've, they've got quality. They've got quality in the pack. They've got quality across the backs. So if they can keep, a reasonable level of fitness. They don't lose the sorts of numbers that Wigan have lost, um, particularly out of the out of the back line. Um, then they'll they'll be competitive. They will definitely be competitive, no doubt about that. Yeah, good win for Warrington. Let's move on to the next game. Yeah, which was uh, Leeds against uh, Lee, uh, and it was twenty four. Six at half time and forty eight eighteen at full time. It must be getting pretty depressing being a Lee fan at the moment. The referee was Mr. Moore. Uh, stats we have some in this game. Uh, despite a sub ninety percent team tackle success rate in defence, it was their attack uh, that won leads the game with twelve breaks to four for nine tries to three and over four hundred more meters. Uh, Lee fell short of the magic 1,000 metres, which is always a sign you're going to lose. Uh, for the winners, uh, Tom Holroyd, uh, one train, 165 metres. Reese Martin, uh, who I like every time I see play, 142. Brad Dwyer, one try assist, 138 metres. And Matt Pryor, who I also like, uh, 108 metres. Uh, for the losers, Matty Russell had one try, eight tackle busts, and 143 metres. He'll be staying lots in Super of, League next year, won't he? Even though the, you'd uh, have thought. Lots of disciplinary uh, from this. Ben Halliwell from Lee, a dangerous uh, contact grade A, no match penalty notice. Matt G from Lee, grade A, dangerous contact, uh, no match penalty notice. James Bell from Lee, grade B, dangerous contact, one match penalty notice. Nathaniel Petru from Lee had two, a grade A dangerous contact, no match penalty no notice, uh, and a caution for a dangerous throw. And James Bell uh, had a second one, also a uh, caution for a dangerous throw. Yeah, I'm surprised his band came for something else and not that tackle that got him simbined in the first half, actually, because that dangerous throw tackle on um, Mikaledski was... Uh... I know there was three men inv two or three men involved in the tackle, which added to it. But Bell was the guy with his arm between the legs that made it made it dangerous. Yeah, a little bit yeah. surprised there, but um, yeah, not 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 a good one for James Bell. Carsten got in touch and said Lee with a strong start, but then capitulated after one simbin. No chance that way they win one game after they can't even beat that lead side. <laughs> Carsten obviously wrote that before he saw the Warrington game as well. Tom Andrews said. Uh, swap to this after the other game was a blowout. This wasn't much better, uh, as expected. Lee can score, but just have the defence of an armless boxer. Don't worry, Lee. Not long till that Wigan game. <laughs> hey, very funny, very funny. Yeah, Leeds had um, Tom Holroyd coming back into this one, starting. I don't think he started a game before. Morgan Gannon was starting as well, the young 17-year-old. Um, Sam Walters, Jared O'Connor and Liam Tyndall were all on the bench so it was a young looking Rhino squad um, but of course Lee did their usual David they scored the first try and then fell to, fell to pieces yeah it seems to be seems to be a habit I don't, I don't think anybody would be worried going down a score to Lee anymore because everyone knows what's going to happen next um, they don't and it's not I don't blame Lee I feel sorry for them um, you know they've, they've They've come up to. We all know the story. We yeah. all know the story. You know, they, they they were promoted too late. They haven't got the salary cap, and it's it's an unfair competition for them. Um, but it's going to be painful for for Lee fans to watch this 
uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, and then inevitably 